Right, Shalom. All praises to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rechab, Kadash. Double honor to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone that rule well, laboring the word and doctrine. Shalom, may in peace, may that be unto the elect of the nation of Israel. With the Israelites, come once again to prophesy the return of Yahweh Shai, Hamashiach, with the world ignorantly called Jesus Christ. Right, to the lay persons, we are the true Christians, so we claim. Right, so we're going biblically, we're going to fill a news current events through the scriptures get into prophecy and flow from there so we've got a couple of articles a couple of scriptures loaded up so we'll go again from them okay. this is the, from the financial times all right and the headline reads the BRICS countries send out invitations and BRICS is an acronym for Brazil Russia India China and South Africa all right this is uh, August the 25th, 2023. It goes into, you know, everyone knows how important it is to, to get meeting numbers just right. Too few and any deliberations lack relevance, but too many and consensuous becomes elusive. It is a con conundrum the leaders of the five BRICS nations, Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa, faced as they held their 15th summit this week in Johannesburg, which is in South Africa. Does the member nations desire to bolster their sway over the global political and economic order has pushed them to invite six new members to join their forum from next year. It will be the first expansion of the group since 2010 when South Africa was added. Bringing more countries into an already discordant group will not necessarily help the BRICS obtain the influence it seeks. When Jim O'Neill coined the acronym in 2001, his aim was to make the case for changing global governance arrangements and not necessarily the growth potential of these countries. Instead, the BRICS label became a marketing tool for funds seeking investors with an appetite for risky but fast-growing emerging, emerging markets, in quotes. It says the BRICS nations now account for one-third of the global economy but they have never been a cohesive economic unit. Gross domestic products per person, trading patterns and policy styles vary enormously. Their politics differ too. Brazil, India and South Africa are democracies, while Russia and China are autocratic. And they're also communist too. Says the former grouping favours non-alignment, the latter is outright anti-West. Meanwhile, China and India's stra uh, strategic rivalry weakens as it weakens it as forum for trade and regulatory policy. Instead, the group is unified in its opposition to the global economic hold of the G7. The dollar's dominant role in the international economy has driven calls for de-dollarization. Meanwhile, the BRICS launch of the new development bank in 2015 was its attempt to construct an alternative lender to the World Bank where its voting power is outweighed by the Western bloc. But the notion that expansion will turn these ambitions into reality is wishful thinking. The planned addition of oil, major Saudi Arabia, next year is seen as an opportunity to dilute the dollar's dominance in the oil trade. But Riyadh will be reluctant with its currency pegged to the US dollar. And if I may okay. just interrupt there. See, there is, you know, it's sort of nail on the head there. There is a lot of divergence in ways of governance, you know, certain beliefs but they're united against what we term the scriptures term as babylon the great you know and that's prophetically or biblically the angle or the perspective we need to look at it from is that there's these groups that seemingly don't have too much in common what they do have in common is an adversion you know to babylon the great you know so that's a it's a it should be a worrying sight for them of babylon the great that's right we all have one thing in common and that's the you know america is their enemy uh, even at the summit, a commitment to use local currencies more fell well short of anti-dollar rhetoric. The current members are also unlikely to cede their guaranteed 55% voting power as founders of the NDB. The new invites or the new invitees will not go unnoticed in the West. However, they would raise the group's share of global GDP, gross domestic product, to 37% and double its portion of global crude oil output. 
This would support China's ambition to create an anti-West bloc to rival the G7. But with existing differences between the five, finding a single voice across 11 will be even more strenuous. Democracies in the group keen to remain amissable with the West will wince at the planned inclusion of Persia. To you, biblically where are we looking? Ezekiel 38. Now Russia is confused about Gog and Magog. So there's Persia, Libya and Ethiopia with the... Right. Uh, so again, sorry. That's right, yeah, we're shielding helmet too, man. There you are. So Russia being the guard to these nations, you know. Just as similarly, it's the, the sort of flip side of the coin as once was, I guess, Babylon the Great being that great superpower that no one could test. If you're allied with Babylon the Great, you're good. You know, it's a, it's a massive uh, nation that's really taking the... It's written as Brazil, Russia, India, China, but really everyone knows you know, Russia is the one that would challenge Babylon the Great head-to-head -head if it had to come to that. You know, so there's two sort of flip sides of the same you know, model which uh, EU, for example, has always been protected by the idea of America, Babylon the Great, that protective force. Right. I believe, if I remember, they, they formed as well, just so there can be like a, <coughs> a force against uh, the USSR when it was in power, until it fell in 91. It says, um, the mere fact that nations such as Iran, Egypt and Saudi Arabia are keen to join suggest they do not think membership will require them to make significant comments or sacrifices. Many nations would also be wary of China's attempts to steer discussions as the group's economic behemoth. An expanded BRICS will struggle to challenge, transform or come up with a rival to the West architecture of global economic governance. It may, however, be a useful talking shot for its members. It is also an opportunity to keep one foot in China's tent for New Delhi, it provides valuable scope to keep tabs on its rival. The BRICS may grow, but it is unlikely to achieve much. Plenty of talk, little action, not too different then from some business meetings. That's it on that article. Um, so, pretty much covered verbally the, the topics there, or the, the focal point there. You know, that being Babylon the Great has opposition now. So this is Isaiah 47 and verse 1. It says, Come down and sit in the dust, O virgin daughter of Babylon. Sit on the ground. There is no throne, O daughter of the Chaldeans. Thou shalt no more be called tender and delicate. And once, you know, I made reference to as was, seen as the big superpower, you know, the bully that no one could touch. But now, yeah, shall, no more, shall no more be called tender and delicate. It's not looked at in the same light, in the same vein as it once was. It's still powerful. Uh, don't get us wrong, it still has a long way to fall from that top, but it cer certainly is circling the drain. You know, and a lot of shows of weakness are being seen on the world stage. Verse 2. <clears throat> Take the millstones and grind meal, uncover thy locks, make bare the leg, uncover the thigh, pass over the rivers. Thy nakedness shall be uncovered, yea, thy shame shall be seen. I will take vengeance, and I will not meet thee as a man. You know, and nakedness and shame are interchangeable. Revelation 3.3, 3. Revelation 16.15, talks about keeping your garment so no one see, see your shame. You know, so there's no covering for Babylon the Great anymore. You know, they're being seen for what it is, which is you know, weak at this point. You know, there's strength to it, but it's weak. You know, it's diminishing in its strength and its power. You know, and that's a precursor to it ultimately falling. Pertain to biblical prophecy of Babylon the Great, it's fallen, it's fallen. Uh, Romans chapter 12 verse 19 uh, Romans chapter 12 verse 19 Dearly beloved, avenge not yourself but rather give place unto wrath for it is written, vengeance is mine I will repay, saith the Lord that's right and uh, as you can see that the current hegemony of Babylon the Great is falling all right? ultimately it's going to be, you know destroyed by Yahabash and Rashai and is using Russia as uh, well as the other nations that is being uh, guarded by Russia you know to, to destroy America you know complements of the ICBM missiles and the chariots of, of the Lord as well okay it's only going to take the Lord one hour to destroy America all right turning it into a lake of fire man and that fire is going to burn for a long time until then you know you know we're going to obviously keep on um, <coughs> You know, watching out for the prophecies and you know prophesying against it. And once 
you know, the fire's over, it's just going to be desert creatures dwelling there. Alright. Okay, I'll make it. Isaiah 66, verses 15 and 16. For behold, Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai will come with fire, and with his chariots like a whirlwind, to render his anger with fury, and his rebuke with flames of fire. For by fire and by his sword will Yahweh plead with all flesh, and the slain of Yahweh shall be many. So it's not going to be, you know, a few that are unrepentant. It's going to be the majority. You know, and the ones that are saved, the ones that are redeemed, receive that biblical salvation, is going to be a remnant. There's going to be a few. Isaiah chapter 62 and verse 6. I have set watchmen upon thy walls, O Yerushalayim, which shall never hold their peace, day nor night. You that make mention of the Lord Yahweh, keep not silent, and give him no rest till he establish and till he make Jerusalem praise in the earth. That's right, man, and where, you know, the spiritual watchmen, you know, of the nation of Yasha'ala, uh, of the nation of Israel, which consists of the so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. The Israelite foreigners, all right? You know, we're giving the Lord no rest day and all night, man. You know, constantly, <clears throat> you know, feeding the sheep and, you know, making you aware of what's going on, all right, on the world stage, you know, and uh, <clears throat> letting you know of prophetic signs that's taking place, all right? That's it, because you can see it all, but if you don't have it linked to the scriptures, you know, you'll think it's some secular thing that's unlinked to things happening for a time, you know, and you'll lose the sight, if you like. And the Lord has to spiritually open your eyes and ears to you to you know comprehend fully what's, what's taking place in the spiritual realm. It speaks from Revelation 3 and I believe verse 18 about being given the eye self to see, anointed your eyes with the eye self to see, that's a spiritual eye self. You know, so you can have physical blindness, which the Messiah cured, but you can have spiritual blindness as well, you know, which again the Messiah cured or can cure. Certain ones are meant to be blind. You know, the disciples came unto him and said, Why are you speaking unto them in parables? He said, well, unto you it is given to understand the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. So it's not every time you know, a parable or a metaphor, an analogy was put forth. It wasn't always put forth for someone to understand. You know, some, it's just them simply not to get it, because that wasn't where they were appointed. That wasn't their lot. That wasn't their position. An article from um, <coughs> news.bitcoin.com dated August the 27th, 2023. The hopeful year that all prophecies come to pass. And uh, the headline reads Mastercard launches CBDC, Central Bank Digital Currency Partner Program. It says uh, Mastercard, the credit behemoth, announced the launch of a new program to widen its understanding of central bank digital currency and its possible applications. The CBDC partner program will be integrated by Ripple, Consensus, Fluency, Idemia, Consult, Hyperion, and uh, Fireblocks to collaborate on the possible integration of these tools with existing structures. So Mastercard announced the launch of a central bank CBDC driven program due to the interest that these tools have seen from central banks. The CBDC partner program is Mastercard's initiative to learn more about how central bank digital currencies are being developed and how can and how can these government issued currencies interact with private credit companies several companies with expertise in the CBDC field like Ripple which is involved in Halal's stablecoin pilot and Fluency which builds CBDC interconnection solutions will be part of the group other inaugural partners of the group are Web3 and Ethereum software boutique Consensus Digital Identity Technology Provider Idemia, Digital Identity Consultant Consult Hyperion, Security Technology Group Gisek uh, Devrient, and Digital Asset Operations Platform Fireblox. These partners will allow Mastercard to work alongside the companies, pioneering work in several CBDC programs internationally. For example, uh, Gisek Devrient is developing a CBDC pilot like a test in a partnership with the Bank of Ghana providing technology solutions adapted to the country's requirements there's involvement involvement in CBDC programs Mastercard is already present in several of these projects around the world in Brazil it is exploring the privacy and programmability of the Drex platform 
also known as Digital Real. In America, MasterCard was part of the pilot of a wholesale digital dollar that examined the feasibility of using such a currency for domestic and cross-border settlements. Achieving interoperability between these new forms of money and already existing platforms seem to be the drive behind MasterCard's initiative on this and the reasons behind this newly launched CBDC partner program initiative uh, and the uh, Raj Damodaran, head of the digital assets and blockchain at Mastercard stated we believe in payment choice and that inter interoperability across different ways of making payments is an essential component of a flourishing economy as we look ahead toward a, dig a digitally driven future it will be essential that the value held as a CBDC is as easy to use as other forms of money. Right? Yeah, it's pretty much on that article. Okay, so we can see again cash cash is uh, being phased out. Okay. Nations are, you know, moving towards central bank digital currency, man. Okay, it's a, a more efficient way of, uh, you know, payments and transactions. And uh, yeah, dealing with money, and, and even for businesses as well. Yeah. And uh, this is going to be the basically the backbone of the uh, RFID micro C hip, which is the MOTB in Revelation chapter 13, verse 16 on down. Revelation 13 and 16, and it calls of all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, save either the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Right, so the whole world's going to be tried, man. The whole world. All right, and uh, you know, Esau, Eden, beginning with you know the elites, the Amalekites. All right, the 1940s. All right, they want their new world order, so they want everybody at each other's throats. They want the economy to crash. All right, so they can implement the new world order, and they will have a lot of people electronically tagged. Okay, but Yahabashi Mashah is going to rain down on their on their enterprise while he's eating, while he's you know gonna get his new world order fully fully in check, fully in touch. Alright. I've got Job twenty and verse twenty three. When he is about to fill his belly, the most high shall cast the fury of his wrath upon him and shall rain it upon him while he is eating. That's right man, so while he's you know, he's getting this uh, new world order underway man, when he thinks he's got everyone, you know, tagged in that, you know, the Lord's gonna intervene. Yes, okay. You know, they've got their bunkers everywhere, man, okay? Mainly outside of America because, you know, it'd be futile to have it built in America when the foundations of America will be, you know, completely destroyed. So they've got their bunkers in various parts of the world, like certain places in Europe, New Zealand, where they're going to hide out to, okay? And uh, even in, you know, these international space stations as well, okay? But, you know, the Lord's going to put his spirit on his men who, you know, right now are prophesying and fishing for the elect, which... You know, they'll be turning to hunters soon and they're going to hunt, you know, for the elites and they're going to be the first crop of, you know, of individuals going into straight into slavery. All right. The first fruits of slavery, if you like. Okay. This is Revelation chapter 3 and verse 10. It says, Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. Behold, I come quickly. All that fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. Right, man. So hold fast to this knowledge, all right, to this truth, man. Okay. And right now we are we are patient, okay. Patient in, in suffering, all right, as well as waiting, okay. Because we don't work on the you know the last time. If you know, I said it right. Oh, you know the Lord works in His own time, all right. We can't, you know, <coughs> want prophecies to happen when we want it to happen, basically. Okay. Or even though we're hastening the day of Yahushua Hamashiach, you know, return, okay, we still have to be, you know, patient and suffer at the same time. Because the truth is all about suffering as well. Right. Yeah. He that endures to the end the same shall be saved. That's right, man. Okay. Got Isaiah chapter 33 and verse 6. It says, And wisdom and knowledge should be the stability of thy times, and strength of salvation, the fear of Yahweh by Hashem Yahushai is his treasure. So in the times that we're going into, the times that prophecies speak on, you now a great tribulation, a trouble, even Jacob's trouble, ensuing to Jeremiah the 30th chapter, it's going to be the knowledge, how does it say exactly? Wisdom and knowledge should be the stability of our times and strength of salvation. 
the fear of Yahweh is his treasure. So it's really going to be the fact through faith, you know, that fear, which those two are you know, synonymous. You can't have faith in the Heavenly Father unless you fear him. You can't fear him unless you have faith. So with that combination, that's what's going to push the elect to be able to endure. You know, he talks about in, I believe, Peter. He says, the righteous being scarcely saved. Therefore, where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? You know, so as much as you know, it's commented on, we're going to this, we're going to that, rebuke is made you know, available, you know, as that's brotherly love, pursuant to Leviticus 19 and verse 17, I believe it is. You know, there, at the end of the day, we, we have to be selfish to some degree. You know, you have to look out for your brother because that's part of you, you know, your salvation. So the, it's, it's uh, incentivized, you know, looking out for your brother because that's part of being selfish. Love your brothers, you love yourself. But when it's all said and done, you know, it's not going to be... You, you have to make sure, you have to make your calling and election sure. You know, the righteous shall scarcely be saved. It's not for us to say, you know, be on a high horse. We don't know who's the elect until we're there. You know, so we need to remain, you know, with humility and doing these things that the book says. You know, otherwise we're not going to make it. And it says in Philippians chapter 2 and 12, seek out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Right. And again, you know, the wisdom and knowledge is that's what's going to keep us stable in the times that we're in and the times to come. The family, the word is, a, you know, is going to be upon us. Okay, that's going to be the light to, you know, to, to guide us through these times, man. Okay, and faith cometh by hearing, as well, hearing the words of Yahweh Shemayachai. Okay, and the more we, you know, bring out this, you know, word, the more our faith is strengthened and increased, as well. And that's why we constantly, you know, pray for more faith, as well. You know, you'll hear brother say, I pray it's been edifying. We'll say at the end of the session, we pray it's been edifying. Well, what does edifying mean to build? And you know, we pray it's built your knowledge, your, your um, wisdom, your faith. For these things will be what? The stability of our times, the strength of salvation. The fear of Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh is his treasure. You know, if you've got a treasure box, you know, a box full of gold, a box full of whatever it is, you know, your money stored up in your bank, you're going to protect that. How much more so this knowledge that you know, goes beyond the material, it goes beyond when everything's, you know, whether it be stolen, whether it be burnt up, you know, this knowledge is what remains, you know, so that's the level we have to value on. That's right, man. That's why scripture talks about storing your treasures up in heaven, mm -hmm. not on earth. Right. And when moth, what does it say, when not corrupt, yeah. the thief can't break from stealing. You know, no one can take this from you, although it says, you know, hold that fast which thou hast, that no one take thy crown, well, that's, you know, metaphysical, or that's that's uh, an allegory because someone could persuade you that you'd have the consent. You know, for example, the, the MOTB, if they pin you down and put it in you and you're saying, no, 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 you're resisting it, well, that's uh, you know, an unlikely scenario, speaking as a man, but well, that's unlikely because the whole point is that it is a test. You know, it is a test. It's whether you're going to accept or reject the Heavenly Father or you're going to accept or reject something that's going to take you away from it. So you have the consent. You know, so no one can take your crown from you technically, but you can be persuaded out of it. That's how a man could, you know, so-called take your crown. But these things last beyond the physical. That's why it's about getting this right. You know, seek the kingdom of Yahweh Bahasham Yahweh Shai and his righteousness, and all these things should be added unto you. So don't be worried about what shall I eat, what will I drink, what will I wear. You know, that's written in the same chapter as the Lord's Prayer. You know, so that's in the spirit, that's in the context that we need to be praying in without ceasing as well this is uh, an article from the telegraph.co.uk all right 24th of august 2023 was when this article was you know published and uh, the headline says biden's plot to send america back into the global close down must be stopped mm -hmm. says we the people are sick of endless c19 scaremongering it says just this week an atlanta college announced that they will reinstate mass of face nappies mandates for stu uh, students and faculty at their university. The Lionsgate Film Studio in Los Angeles has told their crews to wear those face nappies again. The Biden administration, I'm not sure if that'll trigger the algorithm. Yeah. It says uh, the Biden administration is buying C19 equipment and hiring scandemic safety protocol, in quotes, officers. Right, and the federal government is also sending 1.4 billion dollars to defend contractors and pharmaceutical companies for more c19 
countermeasures and Maxine's. Does the lunacy ever stop? The C19 fanatics nonsense never seems to end. In 20 years, we will still probably be prepping for our next windows close down and queuing for our 100th jump shot shot. And why would it end? Biden's project next gen proves that no lessons have been learned from the last set of scandemic restrictions. Even the British government, certainly not one you could accuse of failure to lock down and vaccinate, is doing none of this. We the people are sick of it and are starting to resist. Only 17% of Americans got their C19 extra you know, shot according to the CDC data. Americans constantly read alarmist stories about new variants and potential future close downs and have started saying hell no to the tyranny. But it's easy to say things online and much more difficult to muster the strength to refuse to comply in the face of shame, uh, vitriol and the admonishment of those around you. I know just how hard it can be. I lived in Los Angeles for the bulk of the C19 scamdemic, one of the cities where the draconian hammer stroke of the law fell the hardest. Every day was a test of my patience. Every grocery store employee told me to wear a mask. Every bartender told me I couldn't enter without a Maxine card. Every person walking down the street kept their six feet distance and wouldn't look at you. It was truly a miserable place to live. For not just people like me who stood up to the mandates and tyranny, but for the people who complied as well. And now Biden wants to bring us all back again. It was hard the first time to fight back against the diktats of those passing their clothes down mask and Maxine laws, especially when they didn't even follow their own rules and principles. It was new and we didn't know what to do at first. We didn't know that the C19 really was and how it would affect us in the long run. Nobody had all the answers, but now we do. We know that Dr. Fortune misled the American people about the potential origin of the C19 virus, quickly dismissing the Wuhan lab leak theory as a open quote conspiracy end quote we know the mask mandates forced upon citizens were ineffective at best and we know the devastating impact close downs have had on the mental health of young people it's like a lot of people were you know depressed and things like that and to live their normal lives all right the so routine that was keeping the chicken you know was stripped away from me. that's right and uh, me personally i don't think you know the economy could even withstand another close down right like, it'll probably be the last one the lord willing it is well that's the one that's trying to disrupt the middle class so all you have assume two revelation 13 16 is rich and poor <laughs> you only have two classes you know, so you have to do that but again you know we know in part we prophesy in part there's things we can see we can speculate on them there's things that are absolute you know, we like to distinguish very much between, you know, the two. There's stuff that's in this book that absolutely is 100% true. And then there's us as people within this flesh, you know, trying to navigate and work out, you know, what's what. You know, so we're trying very much distinguish that. But yeah, <laughs> you know, that makes sense to me as a man. You know, exactly. See, richer getting richer and poorer getting poorer. Since, uh, well, in, such a, sorry, in such a drastic time scale as well, you know, that's always been a... I think, you know, generally, but in, in the time that it happened, you know, it's unprecedented. Right. It says, uh, we have but one option, do not comply. As soon as we give up our freedom for a bit of safety, we risk losing all of it, alongside everything that gives us our humanity. I urge everyone reading this today to take into account what we would be risking by sleepwalking again into another disaster. Our jobs, our friendships, and even our futures may be at risk if we refuse to back down in the face of Biden's fear-mongering. But we must be brave and stand up for our right to a free life. It is the only option we have. That's it on that article. So, yeah. So, uh, you know, another, another crisis along the way, man. You know. Again, crashing that economy so they can, <coughs> you know, get the, uh, you know, the uh, seed up on the way. Because really, it's already here, man. This needs to be mandated globally. And so, yeah, right. you always see the articles written to persuade. You know, when you did in, in kindergarten or primary school. So, what what form of writing is this? It's a writing written to persuade a lot of these articles. 
they're nothing but fancified, you know, pieces. It's a sales pitch, you know, it's sales copy. It's an article written to persuade of a certain thing. This is a good thing, you know, it's not as scary as people make out. Anyone that says that it's, you know, not the best thing in the world is fear mongering, is a conspiracy theorist, you know, is not worthy to listen, be listened to. You know, that's the sentiment, it's not said like that verbatim, but reading into it, you know, that's what it is. In sales and business, if you are you're to propose something and you think of objections, the best thing to do is address that objection. You know, I have this slip and slide. You know, you put it on your grass and it just it just slides off. Well, don't you think that that's a bit expensive? Well, let me tell you why this is actually a good value because it's made of some super, super, you know, material, so on and so forth. So you're addressing the concerns within, you know, the sales pitch. Well, that's exactly what they're doing in these articles. Could it be, you know, not safe? Da, da, da. Well, this doctor has already said, da, 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 da. and the, the, the author will often position themselves as, you know, agnostic in terms of the technology, or, you know, they're, they're unsure, but they'll always give you the benefits as well. You know, so be careful and beware. You know, learn to read between the lines as well. Right. Proverbs chapter 22, verse 16. He that oppresseth the poor to increase his riches, and he that giveth to the rich shall surely come to want. This is great, man. That's right, man. And, you know, Esau's pressing the poor, man. You know, poor of the Israelites. Okay. You know, to constantly increase his riches because this man is, he can't, he can't be uh, satisfied, man. He's insatiable. He's insatiable, that's it. All right. But ultimately, all those riches are going to come to naught. That's it. Okay. But they're going to come to your house, shy. <laughs> you know, they're going to come back to your house, shy. All the gold heaped up. You know, all of these resources heaped up. Well, I'm sure there's going to have to be some pre precious jewels in the kingdom, you know, to, to line the streets of Jerusalem. You now, well, where do you think they're coming from? You know, people believe that they're heaping these things up to themselves. For example, in Ezra's, it talks about people that, you know, are so-called prepping, survival prepping. Which, if you want to have a few cans of beans, there's nothing wrong with that. But if you believe and put your faith and trust in that, that that's going to deliver you, you're sadly mistaken. It talks in Second Ezra's about people coming through, you know, and reeking with the storehouses that other people have built up. You know, people have baked. I might imagine a crazy amount of bread for well, someone to come and take that. You know, we're going into a time where people that are without faith, you know, are, are going to be in survival mode. Right. You know, they're going to lose themselves. Because it's one thing, you know, when you can sort of see it, but when the food goes, you know, when the niceties, the entertainment, things that are keeping these people off track, distracted, you know, that's when you're going to see the true colours of some people, you know, a lot of people. Right, man. That's why we're not ignorant to certain devices, man. We're not ignorant to, you know, the plots and schemes, the traps and snares that, that this red key burrito might is, uh, is banning and throwing out there for, for our people to fall into, okay? We've got more of these C19 variants coming out now, okay? And more of them, uh, you know, jump shots need to take as well. Yeah. He's got, you know, a good population agenda. All right. Can yeah. you admit that? You know, we're crazy if we're saying that, apparently. But he'll admit that. <laughs> Proverbs chapter 28, verse 22. He that hasteth to be rich, hath an evil eye, and considereth not the poverty shall come upon him. All right, so I'll read that again. He that hasteth, or hasteth to be rich, has an evil eye and considereth not that poverty shall come upon him. So ultimately in the end man, you know, it's gonna be <laughs> right at the bottom man, alright, it's gonna be down. A thousand years of you know slavery for all these heathens and for Esau. Alright, and after that man he's gonna be you know done away with. Okay. That's according to the book. That's according to the one that you proclaim the sweet Jesus. You know, and then apparently we're the devil for reading what the book says. And quote unquote United Kingdom. United under what? United Queen Dem really. <laughs> so uh it's another article from um End Time Headlines. Okay. And it reads, now the CDC, which is the Center for Disease Control, is warning that a new C19 variant could cause infections 
in, open quote, vaccinated individuals, end quote. So they're outright in telling you this. So okay. hold on a second. So you have to be, you know, a fool to go and take another, you know, another uh, stabbing, stabbing job. All right. This is the US Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. It said on Wednesday, the new BA.2.86 lineage of uh, C19 may be more capable than older variants in causing infection in people who have had who have previously had the C19 illness or who have received vaccines. According to Reuters, the CDC said it was too soon to know whether this might cause more severe illness compared with previous variants. But due to the high number of mutations detected in this lineage, there were concerns about its impact on immunity from vaccines and previous infections, the agency said. Scientists are keeping an eye on the BA2.86 lineage because it has 36 mutations that distinguish it from the current dominant XBB.1.5 variant. Yeah, he saw his, his name for these things. Numbers started, you know. CDC, however, said virus samples are not yet broadly available for more reliable laboratory testing of antibodies. The agency had earlier this month said it was tracking the highly mutated BA.2.86 lineage, which has been detected in the United States, Denmark, and Israel. Yeah, so, see on that article, very short. So, yeah, see that you know, really. You know, pushing, pushing this again, man. All right, because the, the first trial, 2020, that was a test to see how the the masses, which the word masses means death. All right, to see how the masses would react, and a lot of people failed it. Okay, but yeah, you still have you know people waking up. All right, waking up to this, but okay, we still want, <laughs> we still want a lot of you uh, to be zombie-minded and. and to rely upon on the system, right? To lean upon it for uh, you know for support and trust in this devil again. So put them in the face of where the most I should be, you know, which is prophesied Second Thessalonians two, Ezekiel twenty eight, other places, Isaiah fourteen, you know, and there's one more that I can't remember. Isaiah twenty four and verse seven says, for nations shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. You know, so it could be, you know, however it came to be, but we know pro prophetically there is pestilences to come, and that's plural. You know, so watch this space, watch this stage. <laughs> Whether man-made or, or natural. Don't matter, it's a pestilence. Exactly. This is uh, Isaiah chapter 30 verse 1. Woe, meaning misery and destruction, right, to the rebellious children, saith the Lord Yahweh, that take counsel, but not of me, and that cover with the covering, but not of my spirit, that they may add sin to sin, that walk to go down into Egypt, and have not asked at my mouth to strengthen themselves in the strength of Pharaoh, and to trust in the shadow of Egypt. Right, in the modern day Pharaohs, he saw Edom, man. Yeah, and America being spiritually Egypt all over again. And even Apostle Paul sort of backed that up and when he talked about, you know, Jacob have I loved, Esau have I hated. And he went into, well, this is the, what the Heavenly Father purpose for Pharaoh. You know, well, that's in the context, E is the new Pharaoh. Right. You know, he didn't say verbatim, you know, but the inference is there. But verbatim now, we're saying that is you know, the king of Babylon, who would that be? The ruler over this... You know, the top kingdom on earth at this time, who would that be? So if you're a Christian, match it up. Right. Christians will talk all day, but they never want to hit the book. And why is that? That's right. Man. Tell us we're wrong all day, you're misinterpreting this, you take it out of context. What's the context? I don't know, but it's not that. All right. Have a good day. And a lot of people, sorry, a lot of our people fell, you know, for the... Uh, you know, for the, for the vaccines, man. Oh, 100%. Definitely. And then when they're saying, all right, get your 17th, get your 18th, get your 19th, it's a matter of pride then. You know, where you don't want to say, well, you know what, hold on a second. They'll say, no, I've been doing the right thing. I've been doing the right thing. You know, it's, it's a heavy one, pride. Yeah. Isaiah 19 and verse 14, Yahweh Bahasham Yahweh Shai hath mingled a perverse spirit 
in the midst thereof, and they have caused Egypt to err in every work thereof, as a drunken man staggereth in his vomit. <laughs> that's embarrassing, that's an embarrassment, that's shame, that's nakedness. And the Lord has mingled a perverse spirit in this new Egypt. You know, the works is, is as a drunk man staggering in his vomit. You know, you might feel sorry for the guy, but at the end of the day, you'd be like, man, you know, you put yourself there. <laughs> you put yourself there. There's no healing Babylon the Great neither, man. We would have healed Babylon. Exactly. There's no healing. Exactly. Right. You can look at the, the infrastructure of the economy of America, man. The morals, the moral decadence of that place. Right, less and less people signing up to fight in the American army as well, man. Okay. There's a lot, of, you know, a lot of the hardcore, you know, Republicans or the typical America. You know, they're looking at this, you know, with the, uh, there is no biblical principles for them. You know, we're not advocating for America in that, in that sense. You know, our, you know, heart is with Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai. But we, you can understand someone that had their, you know, their country stood for one thing. Well, they're looking at it like, well, I'm not going to fight for this. You know, it's not me. Any more similarly, you know, the people on the, you know, the up and coming, if you were to take, take it back, you know, to where it was them, they wouldn't want to fight. You know, so the meaning what? We're in, a, in a lot of words, I'm saying there's a large division, you know, between half of the population want one thing, half of them want the others, want the other thing. So that, yeah. You know, so that can only lead to one, one place, and that's contention. You know, confusion, that's what it means, with mixture. And trying to appease everybody, you're not going to let anybody be happy. That's right. So Jeremiah chapter 5 verse 19, And it shall come to pass, when you shall say, Wherefore doth the other one Yahweh, our power, all these things unto us? Then shall you answer them, like as you have forsaken me, and served strange gods in your land. So shall you serve strangers in a land that is not yours. Do you love strangeness? <laughs> let's see this. Oh, let's see this. You want to serve strange gods? You want to go into idols? Different gods stop worshipping Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai? Well, Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai said, Okay, you Israelites, if you like serving these gods, you can serve the people that are meant to worship them. You know, Psalm 96 and 5, for all the gods of the nations are idols, but Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai made the heavens. You know, so he's saying, in a roundabout way, you chose to worship strange gods, Go and worship these strange people. You know, go serve them. Because that's what it means to worship. We're truly meant to be set. For example, the name Obadiah, right? Ibadiah. Right? Ibad Yahweh, meaning slave of Yahweh, or servant of Yahweh. So really, we're meant to be slaves or servants to the Heavenly Father. When we deviate from that, the Heavenly Father says, right, you want to serve someone? Well, go and serve these people. You know? And this, at the same time, there's a balance to it. The Heavenly Father said, he saw this pleased with the heathen. You know, because he was a little displeased, but they helped forward the affliction. You know, so a lot of these nations took advantage of that, of us. You know, and there's got to be a judgment for that same way. But it's not just because you're Israel you're going to make it. A lot of Israel is going to be judged. And there's no respect to persons with the Heavenly Father. Right. And, you know, our people, you know, the majority of our people are trusting these idols and, you know, trusting these so idols, and that's going to be their shame in that day. Right. Jeremiah chapter 5 and verse 20 Declare this in the house of Yaquab And pu publish it in Judah Saying, hear now this O foolish people and without Understanding, which have eyes and see not Which have ears and hear not Fear you not me, saith the Lord Will you not tremble at my presence Which have placed the sun For the bound of the sea By a perpetual decree that it cannot pass it And though the waves thereof Toss themselves, yet can they not prevail Though they roar, yet can they not pass over it? For this people hath a revolting and rebellious heart, heart meaning mind. They are revolted and gone. Neither say they in their heart, let us now fear Yahweh our power that gives rain, both the former and the latter in a season, he reserveth unto us the appointed weeks of the harvest. Right man, so you know, two thirds in Babylon the great man, you know, there's the proof. Yeah. There's no, there's no getting through to them spiritually, man, because, you know, they trust in the system and in, and in the society, all right? They think America's going to go on for just, you know, generation after generation after generation. My great, 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 great grandchildren. Right, man. Uh, 
ما انسان The book of Psalms, chapter 49, and verse 11. Their inward thought is that their houses shall continue forever, and their dwelling places to all generations. They call their lands after their own names. So a lot of people, again, as the brother says, they can't see anything beyond this man's society. They can't believe in another kingdom, another rulership. You know, although professing Christ, although professing Jesus, you know, they don't read the book, as we keep saying. They do not read the book to understand that when that character that they believe you know, is coming to give candy canes and all this, he's coming to, in a, to establish or re-establish, re-establish, however you say, a, a government, right? The kingdom of David, right? As that was promised to him in 2 Samuel 7. You know, it talked about that the throne of David would never want a man to sit upon the throne. Well, Yahweh Shai is that. You know, Yahweh Shai is coming to establish that, rather, should I say. You know, and that Peter... How is he given the, the keys of the kingdom when it was promised to David? Well, David and Peter are the same. You know, that's meat, not milk. But it is what it is. You know, so you're going to have the kingdom of David you know, under Yahweh Shai. That's, what, that's the, the next kingdom. Who's got next? <laughs> Them. Right. Sirach chapter 31 and verse 5. He that loveth gold shall not be justified, and he that followeth corruption shall have enough thereof you know and a lot of our people are chasing the bag which you know the, the, that's been diminished like you know the, the currency the you know the value of it especially the American dollar man that's that's getting less valuable and valuable by the second by the second like, <laughs> yeah for real you know just as they did was was it the denarius in ancient Rome you know so you had a a, a, a coin of genuine value you know, of precious metal and then slowly by slowly they were adding you know inferior metals and mixing it up so at one point for example what was you know one gram of silver is now 0.7 grams of silver and 0.3 grams of nickel however I don't, I don't know about metal like that you know but they, they blended it up blended it up or they've been clipping you know clipping it to the point that all right now it's 50 percent silver you know 50 percent nickel they got to a point right now it's 10 percent silver and it's that's uh, being debased I'm using that term correctly. You know, but devaluing the currency. So what you think you've got is not what you've got. And this currency, at least then it was it was a precious mess metal. This currency is a fancified IOU note. I promise to pay the bearer on demand the sum of. You know, meaning that note itself is just a a note of faith. You know, that everyone is acting in good faith. Yeah, you promise, I promise, you promise. It's passing around receipts. That's all it is. Exactly. That's where the, the idea of a note came from. Right, so, exactly, and that, you know, again, true wealth is silver and gold, man. Yeah, Things yeah. that are tangible, you can measure that. Right? Not this, uh, you know, Federal Reserve note. And then it gets, gets even muddies the water even further when you get to digital. You know, because where is it stored? Who's in control? Revelation chapter 6, verse 6. And I heard a voice in the midst of the 4 BC say, a measure of wheat for a penny, mm. and three measures of barley for a penny, mm. and see you hurt not the oil and the wine. The oil and the wine goes into the true understanding of the scriptures, mm. so, the wisdom and knowledge of the scriptures. Man. Like it talks about Babylon the Great destroyed the earth with bad wine, while well, the scriptures, the good wine, spiced wine, you know, the oil. When you think about the virgin's lamps, they didn't have any oil. You know, that represented the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. That's right. Now, this, this is going into inflation and hyperinflation. Okay. A penny, you know, was a, a day's wages. It wasn't just a penny as in Great British Pound, then you have one hundredth of a pound is a penny. You know, it, was, it was a more significant measure, like a day's wages. That's right. right so, you know, things like uh, cheaper uh, foods like bread and, and uh, you know, milk and things of that nature, man, that's going to pumped right up in price okay and it's going to take you know a day's day's wish you know to to buy that all right yeah if we look at the uh the greek word for penny in that verse it's a strong g1220 and it's um strong's g1220 denarion denarion so it goes into a denarius containing 10. Uh, 
and a Roman silver coin in the New Testament time, it took its name from its being equal to 10 asses, a number after 217 BC, increased to 16, which is about 3.898 grams or 1,375 ounces. It says it was the principal silver coin for the Roman Empire from the parable of the laborers in the vineyard. It would seem that denarius was then the ordinary pay for a day's wages. Okay, so that was the currency at the time. And so it went from being able to buy 10 asses, 10 horses, you know, to, to a measure to make a piece of bread. Oh, that's yeah. insane. Yeah, man. The modern day denarian, the American dollars getting devalued again. If you go into the history of that, they were literally were mixing it, you know, with inferior metals to the point that it didn't hold the value at all that it once did, you know, which created a lot of complications for, you know, the empire. Sirach chapter 31, verse 1. Watching for riches consumeth the flesh, and the care thereof driveth the way sleep. Right, man, constantly, you know, having, you know, your mindset and money all the time. For riches, okay. That's nah, going to be uh, you know, detrimental, right? You know, for you people that chase the money. That's, that's a lot. Uh, there is there's a lot of our people putting generally more in impoverished conditions, you know, through a mixture of you know circumstances due to our own fault, and then generational ones, you know, which which lead on. We're all coming about the password, the way out, and how to break the cycle. There's only divine intervention. You know, if you want to be on a secular level, then you know, find find your uh, find your God. Uh, but we're saying biblically, the only solution for this is Yahweh Bahasham Yahweh Shai. You know, and you'd have to do the election first. So it's not for everybody. You know, we accept that we're never going to try to force anybody. I think it's the Spirit. It's the Heavenly Father that would have to would have to put it on your spirit to force you. You, know, you might not even want to. You know, but it'll put it on your spirit, like uh, John six forty four. No man can come to me except the Father which had drawn, what does it say? The yeah. Father which had, let me get it for a bit. I thought I had it, it was slipping. That's his flesh. Right, it's so John chapter 6 and verse 44 reads. No man can come to me except the Father which has sent me, draw him. And I'll raise him up at the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they shall be taught of, and they shall be all taught of the Most High. Every man, therefore, that hath heard and hath learned of the Father cometh unto me. All right, so you'd have to be specifically ordained from before the foundation of the world to understand, to hear, you know, to have that desire. And you can't just choose it. Man's goings are of the Lord. How then can a man consider his own way? It's all, it's all the spirit of Yahweh Hashem Hashem that draws, that draws individuals to him. Okay, you know, one just gets up and says, you know what, I'm a, we'll just worship yeah, God. Yeah. <laughs> and if you do have that thought, you still put it in your there head is, anyway. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. You know, you, you still have, you know, a lot of our people wanting to, you know, have these 10, 20 year plans, their next business adventure, again, chasing the bag. But it's all, you know, it's like you, you're moving furniture into a burning house. You're basically <laughs> building a business plan in a, a place that's gonna crumble anyway, man. Okay. <clears throat> that's why First Timothy chapter six, verse six says this: "But godliness, godliness with contentment is great gain. But we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out." I think there's a verse or two above as well that suit oh, all yeah. the content. So. Uh, Verse 4, he is, pr he is proud knowing nothing but doting about questions and strives of words, whereof cometh envy, strife, railings, evil surmisings, perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds and destitute of the truth, supposing that gain is godliness from such withdraw thyself. He was also supposing, oh well, you know, I made a fat stack. That's godliness, that proves God's on my side. Well, no, you remember Satan. You know, went to Yahweh Shai and said, look at all these kingdoms of the world. You know, and you can have all these if you worship me. You know, so that shows that it's not, you know, Satan also has permission to grant that to them. There's a balance to it, you know, because there are certain men of the scriptures that were rich. You know, Abraham, Abraham. What's the name one? But, you 
know, he was setting it up in the right order. You know, he was putting his heavenly father first and his righteousness and all the things were added unto him. You know, now Jake was chased the bag, you know, and then think about the most as a last resort and then wonders why he's in a, a sticky situation. Basically set the bag as God. There it is. There it is. That's why it says, um, you know, what is it? The, the love of money, that's it, is the root of all evil. It's not money itself, it's the love of money. You can like money. <laughs> you know, you sort of have to like money if it provides for your family, puts food on the table. You have to have a, a, a healthy relationship with it, you know, but loving it, that's putting it up on the level of a God. That's why it says the worshipping of idols not to be named is the beginning, the root, and the end of all evil. It says that in Wisdom of Solomon. And you think, isn't that a contradiction? I thought it was the love of money. Well, no, that's just an example of one of the things, the worshipping of idols not to be named because you make money your idol. You can make your woman your idol. You, know, you can make a family member your idol. And you can make all these different things your idols. So there's only one thing that, that that place serves, or one thing that belongs in that place, and that's the Heavenly Father. And you access it through Yahweh Shai. That's why it's good to be, you know, content with, you know, having basically daily bread, not having, you know, so much money or a lot of wealth, which again, it's not a sin to have that, but even having that, you, you know, you distribute that too amongst, you know, your, your people. Right. And he provides not for his own, especially there in his own house, as an infidel, yeah. and that's denied the faith. So we have to have that, you know, but when you put it on a level, you know, well, you're an infidel already. <laughs> Don't worry about it, you're an infidel already. Of course, again, we all need money to survive, you know, but again, that balance, man. You're not going to survive if you become an idolater. This is Job 33, verse 15. It says, In a dream and a vision of the night, when deep sleep falleth upon men, and slumberings upon the bed, then he openeth, openeth the ears of men, and sealeth their instruction, that he may withdraw man from his purpose and hide pride from man. You know, so the Heavenly Father is consistently programming us, you know, all of us. Micromanaging wisdom of Solomon 12 and 1 for that incorruptible spirit is in all things. Okay. Right. First Timothy chapter 6, verse 9. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare. That's right, when you have a lot of riches and wealth, man, you know, you're tempted to want even more. Okay, you know, you start to get all uh, <coughs> And now you're caught up in, you know, in, you know, you, you know, your riches and your wealth and materialistic things and gains. That's so using the world rather than simply using it. That's right. And that becomes a snare because you know you, less time will be, you know, applied to, you know, to the Lord. That was a, there's a scripture. Um, give me neither poverty nor riches. Your food, you know, food convenient for me. Poverty. You know, you don't want poverty in, unless you steal. You know, blaspheme the name of the Lord through sinning, and you don't want riches that you're full, and you say, Well, who's the Lord? You know, you want to be in that happy medium. Again, not to say people can't be in poverty and sincerely worship the Heavenly Father, people can't have riches and sincerely worship the Heavenly Father, but it certainly creates, you know, another obstacle, you know, or another potential prospective snare to get entrapped in. Right. Verse 9, and into many foolish and hurtful lusts which drown many destruction and perdition. Right? So, you know, fooling and money will soon depart, man. Okay? What's the point in trying to gain the whole world when you're going to lose, you know, your soul? Okay? Yeah. Uh, got another article from uh, End Time Headlines. Okay? And it's, uh, whoops, bear with me. The headline says, the Chinese Communist Party embarks in 10-year project to rewrite the Bible. Last month, man. It says, as part of a push to sinicize religion, of course, the Chinese Communist Party has embarked on a 10-year project to rewrite the Bible and other religious texts. You know, it's how it's always the Bible first. It's never the Quran or any of those holy books. Even though it says other religious texts, but... You know, the Bible is the word of God, man. The word of they God. have them films, whether it's an awesome apocalyptic film. 
You know, they have them great famines, all this is of biblical proportion. You know, so there's something in the spirits of the people that are heathens too, <laughs> that know the true you know, majesty that's written within this word. That's right. The Lord will put his, you know, his spirit on, on these heathens to see things. Right. As well. It's part of his spirit on all flesh. That's it. Prophesy, you know, dream visions. It says, uh, in the Gospel of John, Yahweh Shai famously confronts the accusers a woman caught committing adultery saying, let the one among you who is guiltless be the first to throw a stone at her. The chastened accusers slink away and Yahweh Shai says to the woman, has no one condemned you? No one, sir, she replied, neither do I condemn you, said Yahweh Shai, go away from this moment, sin no more. Unless you're a CCP official, then it's a story of a dissident challenging the authority of the state. A possible sneak preview of what a Bible with the socialist characteristics might look like appeared in the Chinese university textbook in 2020. The rewritten Gospel of John excerpt ends not with mercy but with Yahweh himself stoning the adulterous woman to death. Across Henan province, local CCP officials forced Protestant churches to replace the Ten Commandments with Xi Jinping quotes Thou shalt have no other gods before me because sorry, Thou shalt have no other gods before me became diktats like resolutely guard against the infiltration of Western ideology. The ten year project to rewrite the Bible, Quran, alright, and other sacred texts is all part of Xi Jinping's quest to make the faithful serve the party rather than God. As the 19th Party Congress Chairman Xi declared we will insist on the sinicization of Chinese religions and provide active guidance for religion and socialism to coexist. When is, sorry, when they write in sinicization, is that with a C, like China? S something. Wait a minute. What does that mean? Let me look at it. Definition of Sinicize in Oxford Dictionary Online. Sinicize. Make Chinese in character or form. And there'll be more, there'll be more definition. Yeah, the act or process of making something more Chinese in character or bringing something under Chinese influence. That's the noun for it, yeah. Uh, Yeah, man. Uh, let me translate. Xi Jinping has no problem with the first commandment, just so long as he and the CCP are playing the role of God. Right. Right, right same, there. same with E. Same thing with E. I say you can have no other God before me. And what image does he portray? It's the image of the Most High, His Son. Despite that being completely contrary to what's actually written within the book. Again, if you Christians were diligent, were reading, you'd understand that. You know, so that as much as they're talking about, you know, without Western influence, <clears throat> well, you're both, you know, using this book, the Eastern book that belongs to Israel, you know, meaning the children of Israel, you know, and then you're imposing your own nation's pictures, ideals, you know, upon it. So it's nothing new, you know. Right. You might expect the Vatican, the leaders of the largest Christian congregation in the world, to be incensed and defiant. Unfortunately, you'd be wrong. In a secret 2018 negotiation, the Vatican agreed to allow the CCP to select Catholic bishops in China, supposedly in exchange for vague reassurances of safety for some Catholic congregations which were immediately abrogated. The CCP wants the authority to select the next Dalai Lama, a sacred tradition in Tibetan Buddhism, Tibetan Buddhists are attempting to stand up to the CCC, CCP coercion, but Beijing counters that even Pope Francis, leader of the mighty Catholic Church, accepts their authority over church leadership. There's a lot right there, and that's the end of the article, to be honest. Huh? So, you know, see the pride in these, in these uh, you know, top members of these nations, man, wanting to you know, change the word of God. Right, put their ideals on it.
we look up to them as, you know, as a, a mighty power. Right? Really, we, we started the, uh, you know, the first folks were black. All right, the first uh, folks in the, in the Catholic Church were black, so-called. But, you know, that's where, that's where this is headed now. Isaiah 34 and 16 Seek you out of the book of the Lord Yahweh and read No one of these shall fail Meaning none of these prophecies right, None shall want her mate Meaning no other book can compare with the Bible From my mouth it hath commanded And his spirit it hath gathered them And it proves what you just said there You know the Lord talks about the Bible first You know the movement into biblical proportions ap um, Apocalyptic films You know it's always the Bible in the forefront of everyone's you know, mine. As much as it's become secularized, the society's become secularized. The Bible's been taken out of the schools, you know. And that's the first thing when people wanna, you know, deal with religion. That's what they'll talk about. You know, they want to bash religion. The first thing they'll talk about is quote unquote Christianity, the scriptures. You know? Right. So even, even that move that China's making, or Xi Jinping's making. That's prophetic in itself. Right? You can't do nothing against the truth before the truth, man. Right. Right. Quick definition of the word religion. Right. Religion. So, the Oxford Dictionary definition of the word religion means the belief the noun is the belief in and worship of a superhuman power or powers especially a god or gods okay, we've got similar words like belief, faith, divinity, theology All right. second definition a particular system of faith and worship or uh, a pursuit of interest followed with great devotion and comes from the, uh, the latin the origin religiae which is to bind from old french Oh, for the, sorry for the next Latin, religio, obligation, bond, reverence, and you know the prefix re means again, or back, you know, back again. So, you know, to bind, religio, Latin. So, uh, yeah, life under monastic vows, Middle English. The word of religion, yeah, man. So it's good to get into these words. To bind again, basically. This is the book of James, chapter 1, and verse 26. It says, If any man among you seemeth to be religious, and bridleth not his tongue, but deceiveth his own heart, this, man relig this man's religion is vain. Pure religion, and undefiled before the Most High and the Father, is this, to visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction, and to keep himself unspotted from the world. You know, so we used to, or there used to be a lot of guys, you know, among GMS that would say, we're not a religion, we're not religious. But I believe it was Elder Apostle Kabar, you know, that really went into that word and said, well, look, it's an example here, it's an example here. We are religious, but we're not the religions of the world. We are aiming for that pure religion, that true religion. Right? We remain unspotted from the world. But, you know, we've probably headed away from the word religion because of how it is used by the world. You know, but that's like saying we don't want anything to do with the rainbow. You know, because it's being corrupted. Well, no, we need to establish, well, what was it actually? You know, established for the bow was set in the cloud to say that the heavenly father would not flood the earth again with water you know and that was the covenant made with him the heavenly father and every living creature exactly so in vogue i want to say there's a covenant there's a covenant for me there's a covenant for me well that one's for you you know it's for the squirrels as well you know the cows the sheep so on and so forth and the greek word for uh religion in james chapter 1 verse 27 which is strong g2356 goes into religious worship, especially external, that which consists of ceremonies, religious discipline, religion, right? religion worshipping, and when you get the root word, that's strong G2357, strong G2357, 
Uh, fearing or worshipping God, tremble, trembling, fearful. Okay. Yep. Another root word for that. D two three six zero. Strong's G twenty three sixty. Thra Ao. Thra Ao. It says to cry aloud, make a noise by outcry. In the New Testament, to trouble, to frighten, to be troubled in mind, to be frightened, alarmed. So, you know, you know, we're supposed to be having that fear of Yahweh back in our diamond. Yeah, that's the, the pure religion in that sense, man. It reminded me of uh, those that quit sigh and cry for the abomination of the you know, So we're there. inwardly, outwardly, you know, we're vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked. You know, we're trying to remain unspotted from the world as it lies by and change. Another article as well. Uh, main time headline once again. It says, is the banking industry going the way of Facebook censorship for conservatives? It says, uh, opinion. It says, what happens when the platform that controls all of your social interactions decides to, con to content you post is not, decides the content you post is not acceptable to community standards? Beliefs such as marriage is between a man and woman, or that men are actually men and women are women, or that allowing minors to transition to another gender is dangerous. If you're a conservative on Facebook, you have learned it means your content or your content is blocked or shadow banned, visible but limited, and your account is at risk of being placed on restriction or shutdown. Now imagine that same type of philosophy being applied to the banking industry. Could banks that don't like their account holders conservative values shut them down too far-fetched you say it is already happening now and if it is not nipped in the bud now those banks getting away with it will set a precedent for other woke banks that have decided they don't like conservative values because they are too uh, risky in quotes so the latest example of such debanking is uh, indigenous advanced ministries a memphis tennessee based non-profit engaged in charitable efforts for orphan children in Uganda. The ministry was warned without explanation by Bank of America in a letter in April that the organization was operating in a business type we have chosen not to service at Bank of America and would be closed within 30 days. An additional letter was sent in May stating its risk profile no longer aligns with the bank's risk uh, tolerance. Sounds kind of vague doesn't it? Like other conservative accounts that have faced such closure no specific reasons are given, but instead vague general terms that can pretty much apply to any activity. This is the same type of response conservatives receive from the Facebook when they try to find out what community standards had been violated. No details are provided, giving those on the censorship side a wide range of cover to persecute as they like with no accountability. The ministry, which believes in pro-life values and that marriage is between one man and one woman on its website has maintained two accounts with the bank since 2015 and has now filed a consumer complaint this week to Tennessee Attorney General Jonathan Schermetti to determine whether their accounts were closed due to religious discrimination. Indigenous Ministry founder Steve Haft wrote in the, com in the complaint he was left very confused as the ministry does not donate to or otherwise advocate for any political causes, domestic or international. They would not talk to us about the reasons why they closed the account. This is what we see every time in these situations. The banks close an account, they say vague reasons and it's suspicious. It looks suspiciously like it's political or religiously motivated, he said. I am concerned that Bank of America cancelled our and our partners' accounts because it disagrees with our religious views. Hapro. The sudden closure of the account left the ministry scrambling, the ministry said, and disrupted their planned Uganda mission trip in June and temporarily impacted salary payments there. This is not an isolated incident and the move comes as debanking has grown across different banks. 
A few months ago, JP Morgan Chase and company were also accused of debanking members of conservative and religious groups by 19 Republican states. I might look up the word debanking. I would assume it's taking like their companies away. Oh, yeah. But you take it by the way. Just while you, that's loading, imagine this on the scale of everybody being monitored by a digital system. So your social, basically your virtual signaling, right, cool, you get everything, you get your benefits. And if you step out of line on, you know, that it begins restricting, taking away, warning you possibly if you do that again. You know, it's a very dangerous place that we're heading to. Right. Debanking is also known within the banking industry as de-risking. It's the closure of people's organisations, bank accounts, like I said by banks who perceive the account holders to pose a financial, legal, regulatory or reputational risk to the bank. Mm. Yeah. You know, and a lot of this stuff that these, you know, people that have been debanked are holding, 10, 20, 50 years ago would be no question, the majority of you know, public opinion would be in, within their favour. There would be no question about someone maintaining a bank account just because they simply held that view. You know, but now again we're seeing a rapid change. We would argue a biblically a moral decline, you know, but there certainly is a change objectively in what's either the mainstream or what is acceptable to be said within the mainstream. And that's also a, a difference that we need to draw, that not everybody necessarily holds these views will understand you know, the financial potential repercussions of vocalising any views in opposition to what mainstream is, is pushing. It says, uh, so yeah, a few months ago, JP Morgan Chase and company were also accused of debanking members of conservative and religious groups by 19 Republican states. With rising frequency, Clients associated with conservative or religious beliefs are reporting being expelled from financial institutions, including Sam, Sam Brownback, former US ambassador for religious freedom and current head of the non-profit National Committee for Religious Freedom. He said, we've just heard of way too many groups and entities, particularly religious associated ones, that have been cancelled by their providers. And we want to start seeing some of these cases investigated Brownback commented or commented. The root of the issue is within the heart of woke corporate America. That's in quote. He says the banks are still pretending to be neutral. That's a good thing. Now, it's now I don't think they are neutral, but at least they're pretending. Other companies are just flat out admitting that they have no regard for people of faith or people of a different political belief system. We can also be thankful that unlike Facebook, we have a large number of banking institutions to choose from. However, if the larger banks get together and reach similar policies, smaller banks will follow. Yep. <laughs> then that's, that's, the, uh, that's the wine. That's uh, the wine. <laughs> now, as much as everyone wants to, well, not everyone, but there's a, a large contingent, if I'm using that fancy word correctly, of society that wish to put, position you know, Babylon the Great as this patriarchal, you know, anti rainbow, you know, anti-alphabet, you know, anti-woman, you know, you know, system, but really, in reality, nowadays, you know, there's definitely truth to that in history, but nowadays, it seems like the complete opposite, you know, that anyone articulating, again, biblical views, you know, is immediately shut down, you know, there's no, you, you, can you imagine on every single bank institution that has a rainbow flag, if they were to change that into a, you know, an Islamic sickle and star, or even you know a typical Christian cross, no one would accept that. You know, but if you mention anything about that now, it's problematic. You know, or you are a problematic individual. Well, what does a, a financial financial institution have to do? With, you know, a personal issue as is that. You know, which really is a on the same level as a religious belief. It's a belief held. You know, so a lot of these companies, these institutions are clearly, you know, putting forth their personal beliefs 
And if you're to challenge, well, why would the institution put forth a, a personal or political belief? You know, you, therefore, are problematic, in their view. Right. It says, uh, We can also be thankful that, unlike Facebook, we have a large number of banking institutions to choose from. However, however if the larger banks get together and reach similar policies, smaller banks will follow. Last September, Christians were given a wake-up call to the dangers of financial companies holding too much power when popular online payment processor uh, PayPal announced impending updates to their acceptable use policies, which is AUP. Reported first by the Daily Wire, the policy update stated that it would debit users up to $2,500 if they engaged in banned activities such as promoting misinformation or hate effective November the 3rd. You know, and hate is a very broad term. Yeah. If you are to read a certain scripture, you know, maybe if you are to read a scripture, you don't necessarily need to be on a certain topic, that can be deemed by some as hate. When if you are to look into, you know, legislation in certain countries, the same, you know, the same care and attention that's given to one person's sexual orientation is meant to be the same equitable, you know, and equal care, diligence and attention that's to be paid to someone's religious belief. So then if someone contradicts, you know, or, or has a, a belief that's religious and therefore says, in my religion, that's unacceptable, or well, they could be deemed as hate. Well, where is their protection under the same, you know, premise that sexual orientation, this, that, this, that should all be trekked. You know, similarly, the same, well, you know, where is that? It's not equally applied in every case. I don't know what on earth that was. Just fireworks, you know. Let's hope so. Uh, now. So, um, as the headlines spread across the media, the idea that PayPal's terms gave the company the right to withdraw several grand from bank accounts did not sit well with users, sparking outrage among many who viewed these actions as big tech censoring speech. The Daily Wire's Candice Owen beckoned her fo uh, following to exit the platform, tweeting, just moved all money I had in my PayPal account out of it, and I very much suggest you can do the same. Hercules actor, I used to watch that, Kevin Sorbo added his thoughts to Twitter posting PayPal, isn't sorry, they're just mad they got caught. Another conservative influence, influencer tweeted his warnings on what his and what this policy would mean for those who speak out on issues of sexual orientation and gender identity considered open quote discrimination end quote well that's the thing and then everyone's sorry if their money's hurt that's the thing that comes back to the love of money is the root of all evil but i yes. even saw one recently sorry sorry they weren't sorry prior to that right right <laughs> that rihanna song don't tell <laughs> you only sorry you got caught something like that like, like it said there there's one guy um, taking down the Union Jack, you know, and putting up this new fanciful flag that we often see. You know, and the guy's going, you're taking down the wrong flag. And in response he says, you don't think I know that? He goes, well, at least you know that. I mean, you know, he lets the Union Jack drop to the floor and he's, he's you know, raising up this new found flag. Questionable, you know, but it's, if it's his job, if it's how he puts money on, you know, the table for his family, he's got no other route out, what is he going to do? No? So it, it all goes back to the money. PayPal are sorry, why? Because they probably lost money. I've not done my research in it, but it sounds like they were sorry once a lot of people withdrew. You know, they changed their tune. But it is what it is, man. Right. It says, uh, even former PayPal president David Marcus tweeted out his criticism of the policy saying that PayPal's new AUP goes against everything I believe in. A private company now gets to decide to take your money if you say something they disagree with. Insanity. To which multi-billionaire Elon Musk responded, saying agreed. Do you know, it makes sense if a private company just dictates, right, I will deal with you, I will not deal with you personally, I will have a transaction. You know, if you want to come and buy something, a company is well within their right to say, I don't want to sell that to you, fair enough. You know, but then they want to say, well, your funds that you've got with us, I can take that because I... You know, it's, I don't know. I don't know if it's legal. You know, but certainly a lot of people perceive it to be questionable. Right. Sit on that 
like it like that. So, can you begin to rock it up to me? So Psalm 121, verse 1. I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord Yahweh, which made heaven and earth. That's right, so that's <coughs> and that's how we look that's who we look to to sustain. You know, to, for, us, for, him, for us to be sustained, we look to Yahweh to our Okay man. Because, you know, you know no, no amount of wealth can you know can deliver you deliver you out of uh, out of trouble. It's the richest prophet not in the day of wrath. That's right. And I think it says in Ezekiel that you know they cast their gold out into the street, man. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's where you know we're headed. So there's gonna be a major, you know, upturn with these uh, with the banking industry man. This thing's going the way for the MOTB. You know, so keep your eyes locked. You know, stay prayed up. Sirach chapter 51 and verse 12 For thou savest me from destruction and deliverest me from the evil time Therefore will I give thanks and praise thee and bless thy name O Adawan Yahweh Baha Shami Al Shai Repent Keep the works of faith in the earth And that's the moral of the story every time Hosea Hosea chapter 6 and verse 1 Come and let us return unto Yahweh Baal Shem Yahweh Shai Be a taunt and he will heal us He is smitten and he will bind us up yeah. That Shalom to the elect of the nation of Israel Double honour to the apostles and elders of the great millstone that rule well Labouring the word and doctrine all praises to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rakakudash. Shalom, Shalom.